Without a doubt, the number one most asked question on my channel is how do you actually get low float inputs for trade-ups? I see this comment all the time and I almost always reply with something about sniping skins or using buy orders. But the average person does not have the time to waste constantly refreshing the Steam Market or other marketplaces to find low float skins to snipe at a reasonable price. That could literally be a full-time job. Luckily, buy orders are a simple solution. You can set them and forget them and go along with your day as you would otherwise. Then come back a few days later and have the low float skins you were looking for. I've made a few complete guide videos in the past where I talk about the basics of buy orders, but I've never made a dedicated buy order video. So the goal for today is to make an extremely easy to understand buy order guide so you no longer have to wonder how to get the low float skins you desire. Let's jump in. I'm giving away this Stat Track Factory new Ursus Knife Tiger Tooth when we hit 50,000 subscribers. If you'd like to enter for a chance to win, check out the community post. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Before I get into it, today's sponsor SkinSwap wants to sponsor you with a free case. SkinSwap is a trustworthy skin trading website where you can buy, trade, and even sell your skins for real money. They offer a variety of different payout methods and they're also always running giveaways. So if you want a free case, a chance at a knife, and a 40% deposit bonus, sign up with my link link in the description today. Alright, if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you already understand most of the basics of trade-ups. The goal for today is not to explain to you everything about trade-ups and how to profit from them. Instead, I'm just going to show you exactly how you can quickly and easily optimize buy orders to get the skins you need for those trade-ups without losing money and with the least amount of work possible. If you don't understand the basics of trade-ups, there are tons of videos on my channel going into depth about them, so if that sounds like you, I suggest checking one of those out first. I'll put a card on screen now that will take you to the most detailed trade-up guide you'll find anywhere on the internet. If you need that, feel free to click it now. Otherwise, it's time to learn about buy orders. Buy orders are a request to purchase a skin at or below a specified price. These orders are automatically executed when a seller lists their skin at or below that price. For example, take a look at the Steam listing page for this minimal wear USPS whiteout. Down here, you can see the current lowest listings for USPS whiteouts. But up here, you can see the highest buy order prices set for this skin. As you can see, the current highest buy order price is $62.30. This means that when a minimal wear USPS whiteout is listed on the Steam market for $62.38 or less, it will automatically be sold to one of the buy orders. Here, let's do a small exercise. Take a good look at these current buy order prices. If I listed a USPS whiteout for $62.38, who do you think it would sell to? Well, it would obviously sell to the one person with the buy order at that price. But what if I listed it for $62.16? Who would it sell to then? If you answered the same guy with the $62.38 buy order because it's the highest one, there's a high chance that you'd be wrong. One of the biggest misconceptions about buy orders is that the skins will automatically sell to the person with the highest order price. While that is somewhat true, that's not exactly how it works. A better way to think about it is, setting a buy order is like reserving your spot in a line. And as long as you're first in the line and your buy order is above the selling price, it takes priority over the higher priced buy orders. For example, let's assume the guy with the $62.17 buy order set his buy order at that price last week. When he set that, he got in line. Then a few days later, later, another guy set a buy order at $62.38. Then a few days after that, someone else set a buy order for $62.37. Now today, I listed my minimal wear USPS whiteout for $62.16. Since guy number one set his buy order first and it's above my asking price, the buy order would automatically be executed and sold to him even though two other people had buy orders with higher prices set. That is because he was the first person in line with a high enough buy order price. This is really important information to know when it comes to the logistics of buy orders, and this will help us later when we're trying to set our own buy orders for trade-ups. Before I show you how to know what skins from each collection you should be setting your buy orders on and how to set them, I just quickly want to show you how to navigate the Steam Market to see the current buy orders. From the Steam Market, click on the skin you want to look at, which you can also search for. Then scroll down, click view more details, and here are all of the highest buy order prices for that skin. All right, now that you know how to navigate to the buy orders and how buy order priority works, all that's left to do is showing you how to properly set your own buy orders. The first step is finding a trade-up you want to do. For this example, let's go with this no risk restricted to classified fracture case trade-up. This is a super popular trade-up that also happens to be one where sniping low flow inputs is very difficult, so I think it's the perfect example to show you. This trade-up consists of 10 minimal wear restricted skins from the fracture case below a 0.0933 average 
average float. Before we get into the pricing, we first have to figure out the best skin or skins to purchase from the collection. As you can see, there are five restricted skins in the fracture case which have varying prices. All of these would work for the trade up if they had the right float, but this is exactly where people start to make mistakes and lose money. If I was an unknowing person trying to do a trade up, I would probably just click on each of these skins one by one and set up the cheapest buy orders that I know would get me the skins. But that's exactly where you'd be wrong. If you do this, there is a high likelihood that you would lose a lot of money due to receiving a bunch of skins from the buy orders with bad floats. Then, because of the steam tax, when you try to sell these skins back, you'd lose money in the process. Well, the way to avoid this altogether is to figure out which skins from the collection have the highest percentage of floats that will be usable, so that when you get skins from buy orders that execute, you won't have to sell them and lose money to steam tax. This is where the handy website called csroi.com comes in. On this website, which I'll leave a link to in the description below, simply navigate to the case or collection you care about by searching for it and click it. From this menu, click on item and float drop chances. Then click on the rarity you currently care about. Then click on the first skin. As you can see, this somewhat complex graph shows up. What this graph does is it calculates what percentage of skins that are unboxed from the collection have the specific wear that we specify. Keep in mind, you can do this for any collection and any wear, but to break it down for you, let's continue with this restricted fracture example. As I showed you before, we are trying to get minimal wear skins below 0.0933 average float. So with the Galil connection selected, let's click on the minimal wear section. With this highlighted, you can see the statistics of floats in this range. 25.55% of all Galil connections are minimal wear. The range is minimal wear, so it is of course set between 0.07 and 0.15, in which the average float for this skin is 0.10210, but we don't care too much about that. What we want to know is what percentage of minimal wear Galil connections will have an average float of 0.0933. So to figure this out, let's set the average float box to just that. 0.0933. Now, as you can see, the number in the maximum float box over here changed to 0.11660. And to put this as simply as possible, this number will change and be very different for every skin. Each skin in the game has a different float distribution. So even if I type 0.0933 on a different skin in the minimal wear section, the maximum float number would likely auto populate to something else. Luckily, you don't have to worry about this stuff at all. I just wanted to explain it to you in case you care. But what you do have to care about is this number right here, the 78.15% number. After we type typed in the average float we desired, this number changed. This number means that 78.15% of all minimal wear Galil connections that are unboxed will have an average float of 0.0933 since that's what we typed in. And that is a very high number. So even though it wouldn't be exactly one to one, we can assume that if we set buy orders on minimal wear Galil connections, around 78% of them should come out with an average float of 0.0933. This doesn't mean that 78% of the skins will be below 0.0933, but the average of the skins we get will be. So some of the skins could be 0.071 float, and some could go all the way up to 0.11660, but the average over time should be 0.0933. Obviously, if you only plan to buy 10 skins, there is a high likelihood that your average float won't be 0.0933, and that's because 10 skins is a horrible sample size of the entire picture. But the more connections you buy, the closer you'd get to 78% of them having an average float of 0.0933. This is just the first step. Now that you understand these numbers and what we're looking for, we have to repeat this step with the remaining skins in the collection. I'll throw the five percentages on screen now. Similarly to the connection, 78.15% of the MP5 kit bashes will also have an average float of 0.0933. But for the monster call, brother, and allure, this number drops to a minuscule 38%. Are you starting to see what I'm getting at? As you can now tell, if I blindly set up buy orders on all five of these skins, I would have gotten a shit ton of bad floats from some of them. And I'm guessing that's what happens to a lot of you guys in my comments. But that's exactly why I'm making this video. Okay, now we know the Galil connection and MP5 kit bash should be our target skins for buy orders. Again though, instead of setting these buy orders on both skins, there is another step. Since these skins should have the same percentage of usable floats, the next step is figuring out which one is cheaper. And on the same note, which one we'd lose the least money from when we get bad floats. If we take a look at the Steam listing pages for these two skins, we can see that the current buy order price for the connection is 81 cents, and it's 80 cents for the kit bash. At first glance, it seems better to buy the kit bash since it's a bit cheaper, but that isn't the only number we care about. Since we will still get some bad floats, and have to sell them back, we also need to care about the going market price for these skins. Right now, it's 82 cents for the connection and 81 cents for the kit bash. If we check with another item, we can see that if we sold the bad float connections back at 82 cents, that would leave us with 72 cents, which is a 9 cent loss from our 81 cent buy orders. For the kit bash, if we sell them at 81 cents, it would leave us with 71 cents, which is also a 9 cent loss, this time from our 80 cent buy orders, meaning that we lose 9 cents on each bad float for both skins. The 
next step is figuring out the exact number of bad floats we'd get on average. We know that 78.15% of the floats we get should be usable, so if we divide 10, which is the number of skins we need to do one trade up, by 0.7815, which is 78.15% expressed as a decimal, we get 12.795, meaning that we'd need 12.795 skins on average to get 10 usable ones. But let's just round this up to 13 to make things easier. So since we'll need 13 skins to get 10 usable ones, this means 3 of those 13 skins will have bad floats. And as we just found out, we'd lose 9 cents per bad float on both skins. So 3 bad float skins times a 9 cent loss equals 27 cents that we'd lose on average while getting 10 usable skins for this specific trade up for both the kit bash and the connection. With all of this newly found information, we can take things over to trade up spy to make sure this trade up will stay profitable and to figure out what the best skin to place a buy order on will be. I'm giving away this minimal wear MP5 Phosphor. To enter, like this video, subscribe to the channel, comment something funny, and make sure your Steam trade link is in your YouTube bio so I can send you the skin when you win. All right, so in Trade Up Spy, we'll go to Restricted, Fracture, Minimal Wear. First, let's go over the connection, of course, which we just found out has an 81 cent buy order that we'd be setting. Set the float to 0.0933 and fill that out. We also just found out that we'd lose 27 cents on average while getting 10 usable skins, so we have to add 25 cents to the total cost of this, which here would be a dollar and eight cents because we're adding 27 cents to that 81 cent price tag. Boom. So we would find out that this still is a profitable trade up at 100.72% profitability with now a total cost on average, of course, of $8.37 and we'd be making around six cents per trade up. The Tooth Fairy is a loss, the Entombed is a one cent profit and the Vogue would be a 26 cent profit. But now we have to check it for the Kit Bash. So in here, do the Kit Bash. This one was an 80 cent buy order. Set it to 0 0.0933 again. Fill it out. Of course, we still only lose 27 cents total on average, so we'll add that to the 80 cent price tag, which will now be a dollar and seven cents, making this one more profitable, as you can see, because it will cost 10 cents less on average and have a 101.93% profitability where the Tooth Fairy is a break even, the Entombed is an 11 cent profit, and the Vogue is a 36 cent profit. And the reason that it's 10 cents cheaper is because each of these inputs that we're going to keep is one cent cheaper than it would be on the connection. So it definitely took a bit of simple math and calculations to get here, but now we know the MP5 kit bash is without a doubt the only skin from this collection we should be setting a buy order on to profit from this specific trade up. Now that we figured that out, all that's left to do is to set the buy order. So back on the Steam listing page, we'll just click the kit bash, scroll down, Click it one more time for good measure. You see it's still 80 cents. We'll place the buy order, set the price we want, and set the number we want. This is where a lot of people get held up though. Here's the thing. This is a crossroads because you have two options here. For one, if you're really restricted on time and you don't want to be checking up on this often, you'd probably want to set this to a high number of them, depending on how much money you want to spend. But the problem with this is a lot of other people could be trying out this trade up as well and they might be dumping their bad floats onto these buy orders. So if you got very unlucky and there was someone dumping a lot of bad floats, you probably wouldn't get 78% good floats. So a way to avoid that would be set a buy order number of something smaller like, I don't know, 5 or 10 at a time. Like I said, the problem with this is it will take a lot longer to end up doing the trade up because it will take some amount of days in order for your 10 to come up in line. And then after that buy order is executed, you're going to have to set another buy order for however many you want to do that time. So you will have to wait a lot of time in between getting the skins, but it might save you money in the long run and be the only reason that you profit. So it's completely up to you what you prefer doing. I'm just letting you know what your options are. For a trade up like this, where the margins are super Super tight and our profitability only comes out to 101%, I'd honestly recommend doing smaller numbers of them and waiting because if you do get too many bad floats, you're almost guaranteed to lose money. 
But for a trade up with something like a 120% plus profitability, there's no reason not to just set bigger numbers and spend less time on the Steam market. And that's everything. Once the buy order executes, all that's left to do is to use a trade up calculator like Trade Up Spy to input the floats we get from the buy orders to find the most efficient combination that will leave us with an average float of, in this case, below 0.0933. Then sell the remaining skins that we don't use. Remember, you're not selling every float above 0.0933. You just need to make sure your average float is below that requirement and then sell back the remaining ones that you didn't use. This was just one very specific example. Some trade-ups that you find or see online won't have input skins with such a high percentage of potential usable floats, but some will be even higher. That's why you need to make sure you are checking what the actual profitability would be of the trade-ups based on the numbers that I just showed you how to find. Remember, these are all averages. Nothing will be exactly one-to-one, -one, but it is the best estimate you can get. So the higher profitability trade-ups you find, the less room for error. Lastly, I know I know it can be hard sometimes, but use common sense. This strategy isn't meant to make you a full-time salary. Making money from trade-ups is just an added bonus that you get from a fun hobby. Here's a quick recap of the exact order of things you should do. 1. Find a potential trade-up. 2. Check the percentages of usable floats you'd get on average from the inputs using CSROI. 3. Calculate how much money you'd actually lose from bad floats for each of the potential best inputs. 4. Using these numbers, recreate the trade-up on trade-up spy and make sure the trade-up would still be profitable. 5. If it is, set up the buy orders on the input or inputs you found would work the best. 6. Once the buy orders execute and you get the skins, use trade-up spy to find the optimal combination of skins that you got to do the trade-up, and keep it below the average float you need. 7. Sell back the skins you didn't use for market price. 8. Do the trade up and hopefully profit. All right, boys, I know this could be a little bit confusing, but I did my absolute best to keep the math as simple and understandable as possible. If you don't care about losing money and you're just doing trade ups for fun, that's a different story. But if you aren't looking to risk the money and you're trying to build your balance, it is imperative that you follow these steps to maximize your chances to profit. That's it. If this video helped you, drop a like. And if you want to join the Discord server, click the link in the description. I'll catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, YouTube thinks you'll like this one too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and YouTube told me 75% of you aren't subscribed yet. So go thumb wrestle that subscribe button down below.